What is unintentional animation and how do you go about it? Well you just hunt for existing images, the older the better for obvious reasons, that lend themselves well to animation, even though they were never originally intended for that purpose in the first place. It's a bit like seeing those faces in the clouds, or rock faces, fortuitously sculpted by millions of years of weather erosion and volcanic activity rather than the hand of Michelangelo. So, as you can imagine, it's never going to be perfect, but sometimes it's surreal jerky movements, greases, ink blemishes and stamps just add to their charm and uniqueness. And recycling is all the rage at the moment. Well, it's fashionable to save the planet this season. Obviously there are steps you can take to ensure that the sets of images that you obtain are as animator friendly as possible, such as picking ones with consistent backgrounds, props, people, clothes. Then you arrange the frames as in stop motion animation so that when you play them back at speed, they create the illusion of motion. Of course, you can never be absolutely sure how it's going to turn out until you actually do it. But I like random surprises. It's like jazz improvisation. You don't know where you're going to end up. It's the mistakes and happy accidents that help us see the world in a new light. As Alexander Graham Bell found out when he accidentally mistranslated a foreign book, inadvertently helping him invent the telephone, without which things might have turned out a wee bit differently. Thank you for watching my video and please feel free to leave a comment and feedback. Now that you see that video you might want to click on these other cardboard adventures.